for calling said, my name is John Blair and I am the community banker for the Royal Bank of Scotland. So I cover East Lothian and the Scottish borders um, areas. Um, now, part of my role um, was going out and delivering these type of presentations to local groups right across uh, the country, right across um, East Lothian and the borders. Um, now, due to the pandemic, um, we now started doing these over Zoom. So through Zoom, I've actually been doing these for groups right across Scotland, um, which has been really, it's been amazing. Um, so what I'm going to do just now is I'm going to start a screen share. So the screen share will be for the presentation. So the presentation I'm going to do for you guys tonight is called Friends Against Scams. Um, the Friends Against Scams is a group um, that help people to um, help educate people on fraud and scams and, and different types of scams that are happening right across the UK. Um, they created this presentation along with the Royal Bank of Scotland. Um, it's recently been updated, so we updated this in September, and it's really been updated with a lot of the, the newer scams that we are currently seeing. So hopefully you guys take away um, a lot from um, the talk this evening. Now, as Pauline said, if you'd like to ask any burning questions as we go through the presentation, um, you can either pop your hand up on Zoom, so you can use that so you can unmute and talk, or if you'd like to use the Q&A function, um, I know that Mazen and Pauline will let me know that we've got um, burning questions there, and I'll do my best to answer those questions for you. So I'm just going to get the screen share started just now. So we will get that, that going. There will also be time at the end for questions. So if you do have any questions, feel free to write anything down. Um, and again, you'll have time at the, the end of the presentation to ask any questions that you might have. So as I said, what we're going to be looking through tonight is keeping you safe from frauds and scams. So what we're we'll looking to do is to give you guys information on frauds and scams, on how you can keep yourself safe, but also how to look out for friends and family as well. So scams is the biggest type or the fastest growing type of uh, crime in the UK at the moment. Um, I like to start with a few kind of statistics and a couple of things just to, to give you a bit of information. So the first thing on here is anyone. So anyone can become a victim of fraud. Um, we often, or we used to see that it was really just the, the elderly and the vulnerable who would be targeted by fraudsters. Um, but fraudsters have got a lot more sophisticated um, and they will just target anyone. Um, within the last two weeks, I spoke to a young guy, he was 18 years old, he was targeted by a fraudster um, and did send money to the fraudster. Um, luckily, we did get on this really quickly. Um, he came into the branch the day after he'd actually made the transaction and we managed to retrieve all the money for him. But it kind of goes to show that it's not just the, the elder that they target anymore. We, we tend to see different types of fraud being targeted at different age demographics. And I will be going through some of that um, with you guys tonight. 53% um, of victims are over 55. Um, now we have seen that actually come down to so it was over 65 but again it's it's shown that that the age of people who are being targeted and becoming victims is fallen and um, they are definitely looking at different age groups now and the next stat on here is 1.2 billion in the uk was lost to scams in 2019 um, which is massive it's a huge figure and unfortunately that figure is rising and um, the pandemic has um seen that that increase with a lot more people staying at home at the moment and um, they are tending to get more people at home uh, and, and managing to be successful and get money from um, a lot more people and um, on the flip side of that the bank did stop over 500 million pounds being lost to scammers last year as well so as much as they are being really successful the banks are getting a lot better at stopping fraud um, and retrieving money from uh, fraud that's happened the next one's quite a striking one, and it's, it's one of the ones that, that we are looking to, to make sure that these sessions, like what we're doing tonight, gets this figure to, to increase. But this one is that only 5% of scams are actually reported to the bank or the police, which means 95% of frauds that happen just don't, they're not, we, we don't know about them. Um, and a lot of people will just take it on the chin. And again, we will run through why that might be um, as we run through the presentation. So on to the next slide. So this slide um, talks about the, the cycle of victimization. So this is the cycle that, that we see that goes through each time someone is a victim of fraud. Um, now, right at the top there, you'll see the victim responds to a scam. So this could be a scam. This could be response in many different ways. So this could be someone answering a phone call, responding to a text message, 
responding to an email, clicking on a link, or answering your front door to a doorstep scammer. Once you have responded to a scam, what the fraudster then do is move on to the second step on this, which is the personal details are added to a victim list. Now, the police sort of dub this list the suckers list, uh, and this is a list of people who is then circulated round known criminals, um, as they will circulate this list and say, to their other criminals, we know that this person might respond to a scam, target that victim. So it then moves on to the next step here, which is criminals then target the victim, and the victim will then receive more and more scam approaches in various different ways. So you might have found this personally in the past that if you've answered a phone call and spoken to someone and realized it was a scam, you might have hung up, but you'll find that then over the next month, you'll get a lot more phone calls than you did previously. And that's potentially because your name and number has been added to this list. And then what then happens is what the fraudsters want is, is the victim loses money. And um, ultimately the victim will then lose money and then the cycle starts again. And we always see it kind of go in, in this exact same way. Now, scams are a product of organized predatory criminals um, who gain trust in order to steal money. So fraudsters now are really clever. Um, they use lots of different techniques and they often do homework on a victim before they will um, approach them. So before we did see sort of the scattergun approach that they would just phone as many people as they could until they got a connection and then they would um, try and get money out of that person. Whereas now it's more calculated, they do a lot of homework and they'll target specific people at specific times as they know that when people are the most vulnerable is the time that they are more likely to become a victim of a scam. Um, when people are a victim of a scam, the most likely scams are ones that appear really legitimate. So people phone in claiming to be from banks and reputable companies will often be really successful. They'll always be really helpful. So they'll always come to you with a problem that you didn't know that you had, but they will have a solution to that problem, which is often you either imparting information or sending them money. They'll be really friendly and really charming. They will try and get you on side and ultimately they'll try and be your friend. If you don't give them what they want, they will be really persuasive and persistent. They won't take no for an answer. If they think they've got you, they've got you they will keep at you until they get what they're looking for. And if you still don't give them what they're looking for, we have seen a lot of fraudsters become threatening, aggressive, and intimidating. Um, and it's when, when we hear these calls, it is really hard to listen to because of the way that these calls and uh, conversations tend to go. Now, what I'm going to do is talk about some of the, the new scams that we've been seeing over the last few months, over the last six months, um, and just really give you an idea of what to look for and how to keep yourself safe from some of the new coronavirus scams that we're seeing. Um, so one of the coronavirus scams that's been quite recent is the coronavirus tax refund. Um, so we've seen these coming through as text messages and phone calls. Um, so these come through telling individuals that they've paid too much tax over the tax year and due to the pandemic, they are due a tax refund. Um, what we'd say to everyone is HMRC will never text you or phone you. Um, if there is anything due to you, they will write to you. Um, what we would also say is if they're asking you to confirm account details for them to pay funds into, that is often a red flag that it is a scam. Um, if they're looking for something from you and it seems to come out of the blue, I wouldn't, especially with text messages asking you to click links, don't click these links and don't impart information. Um, we've seen World Health Organization impersonation emails. So these things are coming through and saying that you have potentially breached coronavirus rules and that the government's set out and that you have to pay a fine. Again, these are coming through as text messages and emails. Um, we've seen phone calls coming through as well. Um, but again, anyone contacting you out of the blue telling you that you've breached anything that you need to that you need to pay fines. Again, really high chance that it's a scam. And the one that we've seen, so these fake cure emails, we've seen a lot of these coming out today with the um with the, the introduction of the vaccine. Um, today's been kind of a hot day for the fake cure emails. Um, we have seen uh, text messages and phone calls and emails going out today um, claiming to be from the NHS. Um, asking people to confirm the details to ensure that they can get their vaccine. Um, again, these are all scams. What these fraudsters are looking for is for you to impart information to them 
um, so that they can build up that profile on you. So anything that you receive that comes out of the blue that asks you to give them information, don't do it. My top tips with any emails are, if an email comes out of the blue and it has a link or an attachment, don't click the link, don't click on the attachment. Attachment is often where viruses are held. Um, so if you click on an attachment and a virus gets in your computer, it can do a lot of nasty things. Um, so most of the ones that fraudsters use will, will monitor your computer um, and will often activate when you log into secure websites so they can try and get payment details from you. Um, links will often take you into fake websites. So you can take you into fake websites where it will ask you to either input information or to ask you to log in to various different things um, where they can get passwords and things from you. So just links and text messages and emails, don't click them. And attachments and emails, don't click on those either. So on these, so these are um, some examples of the coronavirus scams that, that we've seen coming out. So I'm going to zoom into these. Um, so when it, I'll zoom in so it's not that the screen's broken. I'm just going to zoom in for you so you can see them a little bit better. So the first one here is from the UK government. And it said it's issued a payment of £258 to all residents um, as part of its promise to battle COVID-19. And it's tap here. So what this link was doing, so this is, these are actually real um, messages that we have seen that's gone out. So this text was, if, if you did click on the link, it would take you to a fake UK government website and it would ask you to fill in lots of different information and ask you to put in your account details so that they can pay the money to you. Now, as I said before, this is a fraud and a lot of people did respond to this one. Um, so again, anything that comes through as a text message that asks you to click on links, just don't click on the links. It's the kind of safest way to do it. So don't click on the link. Um, and if you do, don't fill in any information on there because it will be a uh, fraud and we don't want you to lose information. So this one, as I slide along, is one that said that you have left your home on three occasions yesterday and a fine of £35 has been added to your government account. For further information, please click on this link. So if you click the link again, it would take you to a fake government website and it would ask you to make the payment. So it would ask you for your card details so that you can make the £35 payment. Again, this is a scam. It's asking you to do something out of the blue. And again, just with this one, same message again is don't click on the links. And the last one here is said, Government UK Coronavirus Alert. You've been fined £3,550 for leaving your home without reason. Again, so this one is really, it's going to make you panic straight away. And what I would say with any scam is, if there's something that you feel that you're starting to panic and lose control over, is take five. All of these have got that little take five thing beside it. Fraudsters will use techniques that will make you panic. So this text would usually be a text that would then be followed up with a phone call. So they would text you first with this, and then you would receive a phone call from a representative saying that they are from the government and they are going to take that payment from you, and they'll ask you to confirm account details so that they can make that payment. Um, they know that at this point you're really panicked, and it is often when you're panicked that you would do something that you wouldn't normally do. Um, if you find yourself in this situation, just don't respond. Go and speak to friends and family first, or even come and speak to the bank before you do anything, um, because you might find that you can lose a lot of money very quickly um, before you realize what you've done. So always kind of take five and take those five minutes before you respond to anything that you receive. So on to the next slide is a couple of impersonation email or impersonation, impersonation scams in action. So the one on the left here is an e is a text message that has come out and it's claiming to be from the Royal Bank. Now we do see these uh, texts coming through from all different banks. These, uh, I received one from, that's claimed to be Halifax. Now I don't bank with Halifax, so that was, for me, I'd seen it straight away and was like, but it's a scam. So this one says that the Royal Bank has received a request to update your new mobile number, and then with 783. If you don't recognize it, then visit. So the website there would be the online banking uh, website. Now, if you click that link, it would take you in, it, into a fake site that would look exactly like the login screen for your online banking. Now, if you bank with the Royal Bank, then you might recognize what the digital banking screen looks like, but it asks you for three digits from your PIN and three characters from your password. Now, how this website was set up is it would ask for 
three random digits and then an R3 random characters and then it would refresh and have different ones but it would be blank again so you'd have to enter it again and it would keep refreshing until the fraudster had your full pin and full password then the website would disappear but at this point the fraudster would then have access to your online banking so same message as before if you receive anything through an ask you to click on links don't click on any links that you receive from any text messages I'm going to slide along here to one of the most common scams that we've seen and one of the most successful scams that we're seeing, which is around TV licensing. Um, now, I, I know a lot of you have potentially had emails and text messages from people claiming to be TV licensed. Um, I know I've had them, I've had multiple of them now. Um, so it looks really genuine. And what these refer to is that it will tell you that your TV license hasn't been collected for the month. It'll say that your direct debit hasn't been collected and they'll just ask you for your account details so that they can take the £12.95 payment from you for your TV license. A lot of people are responding to this scam and because it's £12, they then think, oh, right, I'm not going to report it because it's £12. I've done something silly, but I won't do it again. If you have responded to this scam, report it to your bank um, we will um, investigate it and we will do our best to get your money back and um, again please share this with my friends and family and um, because we know it's one of the most common scams that we are seeing at the moment and um, i was speaking to uh, pauline right at the start of this as well and um, one of the other really common scams that we're going to see as we get closer to christmas is around amazon prime and um, so these are coming through in various different ways so you'll either get a phone call a text message or an email and what it'll refer to is it'll tell you that your Amazon Prime um, has expired and it'll ask you to make your, your payment to keep your Amazon Prime account active to ensure any parcels arrive on time. So then we do know a lot of people are ordering things off Amazon um, and they want, want to make sure that the delivery will come by Christmas. So that is why the fraudsters are doing it at this time. Um, so if you do have anything through telling you it's from Amazon, um, as, as a scam. So again, just don't respond to those advances that will come through to you. So I'm just going to move on to what is an impersonation scam. So an impersonation scam will seem like it's a genuine phone call, text message or email. So these will be things that will say it's from your bank or other trusted organisations. Um, you'll be asked to give personal details or asked to make a payment. Um, you're told to act immediately. So like these other ones, there's always a call to action. So we'll always ask you to do something and ask you to do something now. And it's not that you can do it in a week's time or 10 days. It will be within the next 24 hours um, or immediately. And again, the, one of the biggest ones that we've seen or the most successful ones is asking or, or asking you to transfer money to another safe account. So we have seen this type of scam for the last about five years where you receive a phone call claiming to be from the bank they'll, they'll tell you that your account's been compromised but they'll tell you that they've opened a new safe account for you so they'll ask you to transfer your funds from your existing account to this new safe account and a lot of people are falling victim to this scam so it's just again just to let you know that no bank will ever ask you to transfer money from your account to a new safe account and um, it's not something that we would ever ever do and again it's one thing that we would just ask people just to to spread the word on that. So on to the next scam. Um, on to the next slide then, we're just going to then talk about what do fraudsters want. So they want information from you and they want money. So ultimately they want to get your hands on your money, but to to look genuine, they will often build up a profile, profile on you and get that information. So the type of information they're looking for is things like your day of birth, phone numbers and email addresses, home address, pins and passwords. Now all this information is so valuable to fraudsters. This is like gold dust to them. If they can get their hands on this information, they can then sell this information on to other fraudsters um, and, and other fraudsters will use that information to then get their hands on your money. So what do they do once they have that data? So one of the things that fraudsters do is they will try and impersonate you. So they can do this to then gain even more information from you. So they can pretend to be you to other companies who they know have other information to, to build up that profile on you. And then what they'll tend to do is contact you directly. So what we do know now is a lot of people are aware of scams. Um, so fraudsters are having to change their tactics slightly to convince you that it is, that, that it's not a scammer that they're talking to. 
one of the new techniques that they tend to use is you'll get a phone call in, initially um, and it'll be a very obvious scam. So they're hoping that, they, that what they say to you will make you go, I'm not speaking to you, I know that you're a, it's a scam call and they, they, they want you to hang up. What will then happen is about 10 minutes, 15 minutes after that phone call, you'll receive a follow-up call where they'll claim to be the police or the bank. And they'll say, we know that you've been targeted by a scammer. Um, the scammer has got access to your account. Um, what we want you to do is to transfer your money from your account to this new safe account. And they will use that tactic to, to get you to, to move that money across. Um, again, it has proven to be quite successful um, because the people have rebooked the first attempt and they think they've done the right thing and they have done the right thing. Um, but then it's the second phone call um, the fraudsters then put over. They think, yep, I have had that scam phone call. It then does seem genuine. Um, and they will, use the, the, they will use the information that they've gleaned before to make themselves sound genuine. So they will tell you your date of birth. They'll tell you that they know your account, your home address, your email address, and they will try and use that information to seem genuine. Um, but it's always, if anyone tries to get you to move money from your account to another account, it is a massive um, red flag that it is a scam. So how do you protect yourselves? So make sure that you know who you are talking to. Um, like I've said a few times now, we'll never contact you at the blue and ask you for card readers, codes, pins, passwords, login details or passcodes, and never ever give these away to anyone. Um, so the second one is the bank or the police will never ask you to move money into a new safe account. Um, you'll never receive a genuine phone call um, telling you that your internet is slow. So never give remote access to your laptop or home computer. So always verify the caller using independently verified phone numbers, such as from the website that the callers say they're calling from. Um, one of the best tips I've got is even if someone says, hang up the phone and phone us straight back, I wouldn't even do that. So if they phone the landline, um, find a number online and phone from a mobile um, or phone from a friend's phone uh, is even another safer way to do it. And the fifth one here is contact the bank as soon as possible if you think someone's thumb something's not right so we can help you. The faster that you report any type of fraud, the more chance you have of getting your, your money back. Um, all the banks work together to combat fraud. So if you can report any fraud that you think you might have, have been a victim of quickly, there is quite a high chance that we will be able to get your funds back. So I'm going to talk a wee bit about investment scams. So over the last six months, we have seen an increase in investment scams. Um, at the start of the pandemic, it did affect um, interest rates. Uh, interest rates tumbled, and it's been a really massive opportunity for fraudsters to use that to um, target people with investment scams. So we often see that it's any any issue, any crisis is seen uh, by a fraudster as like a greater opportunity to target you with fraud. Um, and again, these investment scams have just sort of popped up and there's quite a lot of them on the go. Um, things to look out for is people calling you out the blue, telling you that, they, that you can trust them and um, that they are from a reputable company and that they are an advisor for this company. Um, they'll often tell you that the deal is just for you and it's like any one-time offer. So they'll kind of say it's call to action again. If you don't invest today, the fund will be closed and you're not going to get this opportunity again. Um, there'll be really kind of get rich quick schemes um, with any, anything, any, anything that seems too good to be true often is. Um, so something just seems amazing. It's probably going to be a scam and it'll be one of those things that say, don't miss out. Um, my brother, so he phoned me yesterday, um, to tell this wee story. Um, so my brother, he is saving up him and his girlfriend to buy a house. So they're trying to save up a deposit. So he's got probably more money in his account than he's ever had before. Um, one of his friends told him that there's an app that he can download that's an investment app and he'll be getting 20% returns on his money. And I told him, no, Michael, it's, a, it's going to be a scam. These things don't, don't work. It's, it's not something that, that I would recommend. Um, he told me his friend is currently doing it. It's on the app, what it basically shows is that your, your money is growing. So what I said to his friend was, right, if you try and withdraw the money, what happens? And what happened to his friend is as soon as he tried to take the money out of that, the fund dropped suddenly. Um, and it, it gave him less than what he originally invested. So that was a scam. I kind of told him, just look, get your money out now and just take, like, don't, 
deal with this company anymore. But these are the types of things. So it seems to be that they're setting up apps and there'll be a lot of them going around at the minute. So again, just make sure that if anyone in your family or yourselves are, are looking to invest, is just speak to an independent advisor and make sure that you know who you're dealing with first and don't deal with someone who has approached you and um, always try and find things yourself. So what types of investment scams are out there at the moment? So the ones that we are seeing are fine wines and arts, seems to be a massive one. Bitcoin is one that we've seen over the last couple of years gaining a lot of traction. Um, there's a lot of um, fraudsters out there using Bitcoin to get people to invest in. Um, gold and shares. So the price of shares in a lot of companies has now dropped. Um, and it's, fraudsters are using this as a, an opportunity to get you to entice you to invest in with them and online trading. So it was the online trading thing that my brother almost sort of got himself caught up in. Um, I guess it's lucky that I work and I do the job that I do that I can kind of help him with that. But it kind of makes me think that how many other people are out there doing these things and not really thinking um, about the implications of it. So how do they target you? So they can use information that they've stolen via hacking um, or they can use information that you've potentially given away. Um, so people often give away information unwillingly due to doing things like online surveys. So I don't know if you've ever done it, but I know that when, you, when I scroll through Facebook or Twitter, um, there'll always be these online surveys. And if you click into the survey, it'll often ask you to fill in a lot of information before you can do the survey. Um, a lot of these will give you kind of five or a tenner for doing the survey, um, but they'll ask for a lot of information, a name, your address, your date of birth, um, and it's often things like this I'll tell people to avoid. Um, fraudsters will use these to entice you to do them so that they can get all this information and really build up that profile on you. Um, social media is a massive, massive goldmine for fraudsters. Now, I'll just tell everybody that if you are using social media, one thing is to make sure your profile is private. So the only people that can see um, you and see your posts are friends and family. Um, if you are setting up, um, any social media, you don't have to enter all the information. So you only have to put in information that's got the little star beside it. So things like your address, your date of birth, you don't have to enter that information if you don't want to. And I guess for youngsters, I would kind of tell them not to enter that information at all. And the other tip I've got for anyone setting up social media is only accept friend requests from people that you actually know. So if someone comes out of the blue, someone you've never met in your life and asked to be a friend, don't do it. it tends to be the youngsters that, that, that do this um, because these are the people who will then scope through your social media and try and find information. Um, Facebook and Twitter has got a lot better at hiding information. Um, we did go through a period about five years ago where we were seeing a lot of um, loans and credit cards being applied for and the information was being taken directly from Facebook. So they were getting enough information of Facebook to apply for things like loans and credit cards, um, but that has improved over the years. Now, what do they do once they've got your data? So we'll see things like cold calling. So cold calling is massive at the moment with a lot of people being at home um, and working from home. Um, fraudsters are taking that as a huge opportunity to cold call people um, and do various different types of fraud. Um, they will claim to be trustworthy companies, so you'll get a lot of them claiming to be banks. Um, BT is a huge one at the moment where they'll claim to be from BT and they're phoning you to test your line and test your broadband as you're working from home. Um, and they'll use that as a way to um, get you to allow them access to your computer. Um, they'll share some fake reviews with people. Um, they'll often offer you better deals on investments that you currently have. And one of the things that we do see them doing is building friendships. Um, so there is a very good BT scam at the moment where you'll get a phone call from someone who will claim to be a BT engineer who will phone you and just say, look, I'm just going to do a quick test on your line. Um, they'll keep you online for a few minutes, do a quick test and just say, right, test, the line's all good. That's perfect. Um, hang up. A couple of days later, you get a phone call from the same engineer um, and then they'll just start building a friendship with you. They'll say, oh, what are you doing today? How's have got any kids? And they'll really start it. And this can go on for months. But eventually what they'll try and do is get you to give them access to your, to the, to your computer. Um, they'll try and build up that trust with you so that they, so you will think, ah, it's just, just David from BT. What's he going to do to me? Um, but we've seen people losing a lot of money um, very quickly. So 
if anyone on here uses um, online banking, um, you can transfer up to £20,000 per day um, out of your bank account. And we have had people who have had this scam happen to them and they, ha they have lost um, £20,000. And for the guy, if it takes him six months, but he makes 20000 out of you and potentially other people as he's doing this to, it's, it's really lucrative for him. And like I said right at the start, if only 5% of these um, are being reported to the banks, then he's got a massive chance of getting away with a, with a lot of money. Um, so it's always good to, to just keep, keep, keep safe and, and try and not um, become a victim of, of these types of, types of fraud. So how do you protect yourself from investment scams? So one of the questions that you just need to ask yourself is where did you learn about the investment? Um, what checks have you done to ensure that what you're doing isn't a scam? Um, have you sought independent financial advice before you invest? That's sort of the big one for me. Is if you are looking to invest, always seek independent advice. Um, investments nowadays, you've got to pay for the advice. So if someone phones you out of the blue and gives you free advice, it's a massive red flag that is a scammer that is doing this. Um, fourth one here is does the website or the FCA page match the website that you've been interacting with? So any company that is going to, that is that, that offers investments has to be um, registered to the FCA page, so the Financial Conduct Authority page. So you can check that the page that you're dealing with matches that database that the Financial Conduct Authority keep. And the fifth one here is, is the email address in the same format as the one that you're engaging with? So just a wee top tip with emails is if you're ever using a computer, you can actually hover over the email address that yours, that they, that's been sent to you with your mouse. And if they are using a fake email address, it will then give you that email. So with email addresses, you can make the email when it comes through, show us anything you like, but you can't hide the actual real email address under it. So it's often things like if you get something from the bank, you can hover over it and just make sure that it is that email that's actually engaged with you. So the next type of scam I'm just gonna run through is romance scams. And again, over the last six months um, with the isolation and people having to stay at home, um, romance scams have just exploded. Um, so people have been using sort of virtual dating um, and using Zoom to, to speak to people a lot, and it has seen um, romance scams just sort of go, go crazy. Um, romance scams is one of the biggest type of fraud that we see as not being reported. Uh, so people will feel that they can't get that money back, that they've done something over a period of time um, and they think, what's the point in reporting it? But we would always, always urge people to report um, all types of fraud to us. Um, so they will often use um, reputable dating sites um, to target their victims. Um, they will really look to, to gain your trust and will play with, your emotion, play with your emotions to eventually ask you to send them money or to gain personal details from you. So how does it work? So scammers will often use, like I said, the, the legitimate dating sites to, to contact you. They'll then ask you um, for your personal contact details so that they can chat to you privately. The reason they do this is that if you're on a, a dating site, the dating sites will usually have, um, they will give you advice. So they will tell you, look out for this type of behavior. They will have um, ways that you can report people through the, the site. Um, but if you're not on that site, it, it just means that they can message as much as you want without um, those warnings being, being flagged up to you. Um, they'll research your interests um, and your relationship status. So we do find that fraudsters will know a lot about you before they uh, contact with you. So, for example, if you've recently been divorced, um, they will kind of use that as a way to, to get in with you. They'll say, oh, I've, I've been divorced myself. Um, and they will use that as a way to, to gain gain confidence with you or they'll even just research things about your hobbies and um, things to make make sure that they've got that connection with you and ultimately what we see is they'll, they'll send you lots of messages telling you how much they love you and, and will ultimately ask you to, to transfer money to them so once they get to know you and gain your trust they will ultimately ask for money so the reasons why they say they need money is flights or visas or passports so that they can come over and see you um, we'll see people saying that they've had a job in the house and their account's been frozen, so they need to pay the workman. Can they just give us a quick loan of money and I'll pay it back as soon as, as soon as I've got access to my account? Or they'll ask you to pay through a, through a third party. 
So one of the things that we do see is when they do ask for money, they will often not give you their own account details. They'll ask you to pay it to someone else uh, because they've lost access to their accounts. So they need to go and get it from one of their friends. Um, again, these are kind of massive red flags that it is a scam. Um, now, I'll tell you a quick story as well. So one of my friends, um, so she's 30, uh, she's single. She was speaking to a guy on Tinder who is down in Newcastle. So I'm up in, we're up in Edinburgh, East Lothian. So it's about kind of an hour and a half on the train. So she's been speaking to this guy through the dating app Tinder um, for quite a while. Um, and he said, oh, they were due to meet up over the weekend. So he was due to come up on the Friday on the train. And paid for my job this week. Could you send me £30 for the train and I'll give you the money back on Monday when I get paid for my job? Um, she told us about it just in a conversation. I was like, ah, it doesn't, that doesn't sound quite right to me. Just send them a message back and say that you've not been paid either and then you can meet them next week. So she sent them that message and the profile disappeared. Um, so as I said, like, clearly a, a fraud. So things like that, it seems to be kind of it's something £30, but I said to her, if you, you're probably not the only person he's speaking to. So if he got £30 for 10 other girls, he's made 300 quid, and it's a brilliant weekend for him. That's his weekend money. He's, away, he's having a great time. Um, and he'll just delete that profile and move on and do the same thing the next game week. Um, so even things like that, it can be things that go on for a very long time, but even kind of these short-term ones where people will just try and get smaller amounts of money from you, um, it, it does show that there is targeting every age group at the moment. Um, on to kind of how to spot a romance scam. So things that we see is they will contact you first. And um, with these romance scams, they will often be the one that comes to you and they will know things about you. Um, they'll ask you lots of questions. So when you start getting messages from these fraudsters, especially once you've given them your personal contact information, they will bombard you with messages asking you lots of different questions. Um, they'll often have a really attractive profile picture um, and they often have poor grammar um, and spelling. The reason for that is they're probably talking and they're often talking to a lot of different people um, so they send the messages out really, really quickly um, and they often then have really poor grammar and spelling in them. Um, the stories will often change over time. Um, so some of them will really struggle to keep a consistent story um, and again it's just kind of usually a, a bit of a red flag um, and they will often almost always refuse to video chat or meet with you in person and um, so they'll often say that their cameras don't work or they don't have the technology to do um, video calls and with now due to the pandemic it's really easy to make up an excuse not to meet in person um, but what they really want to do is get hands on money um, and they will ask you for contact details so they can contact you directly rather than going through websites or social media. And again, how do you protect yourself from this type of fraud? So talk to someone you trust about what's happening or who you're speaking to or in a relationship with. Or you can always come and talk to the bank. So the bank will always speak to you. Um, you can also speak to the police as well. Um, we'll always be there to try and help you through any, any issues that you have. Um, look out for the warning signs. So how did they first contact you? Um, did they approach you? And if so, you need to stay extra vigilant. Always take it slow. So if something seems a bit off, um, your instincts are often the best thing. And I would say that with any type of fraud. So if you feel that something isn't quite right, it probably isn't. And your gut instincts are often the best thing that you have. And on here, it just says, don't let your heart rule your head. The one thing that I would always say, and I would kind of say as my top tip, is don't send money to someone that you haven't met in person. Um, no matter how much they tell you they love you or they want to be with you, um, don't send money. Um, always, always let them um, find a different alternative solution. Um, once, often what we see with romance scams is once you send money once, it seems to then escalate and it can escalate really quickly. And stop any contact and block all contact with the person if you are worried or suspicious. Um, so you can get in touch with the bank or the police and we can help you. We can help you do that as well. Now, if you do find that you have done anything that you shouldn't have done, or if you're just looking for a bit of extra inf information on all the different things that I've spoken about today, you can find this information through the Royal Bank of Scotland Security Centre. So that is at www.rbs.co.uk forward slash security. Um, now, even if you don't work bank with the Royal Bank, you can still visit that site as it does have a lot of useful information. 
Um, you can also use the Friends Against Scams website. Um, so that's at www.friendsagainstscams.org.uk. Now, that website is brilliant, and it's constantly updated with a lot of the new uh, scams that we see. So I, I, I use Friends Against Scams all the time because it keeps me up to date with all the different things that's going on. And it's got a really great thing called the Little Book of Big Scams, which gives you a vast um, information on that. Um, if you think you have been a victim um, yourself, or if you think anyone that you know might be a victim of fraud, um, visit your bank in the first instance. Um, and you can also report any scams via action fraud. So you can call them on 0300 123 2040. And the last thing here is talk. Um, so as, we, as I said before, only 5% of scams are reported, but you shouldn't feel embarrassed about being a victim of fraud. Um, you're not alone, so it's always good to talk about anything that you, that you think you might have done or potentially see if others have done things as well. So these are just a few extra tips on how to protect yourself. So first one here is just be careful if you receive any phone calls, text messages or emails from anyone claiming to be the bank or any trusted organisation. So as it says here, a genuine bank or organisation will never contact you out of the blue and ask you for your full PIN, full password, card reader codes, passcodes or to move money from your account to another safe account. And personal information is yours, so don't give it to anyone, okay? Uh, Never click on links received in emails or text messages, as this could take you to fake websites um, where it could ask you for personal information, login details, and always go via search engines or direct to the company website if you do want to know about anything that's happened. And the other thing here is never allow remote access to your computer or any third party. Um, scammers will often ask you to download apps um, or send you an email with such things, such as TeamViewer. Um, we have seen that type of scam um, actually kind of build up over the last kind of month where fraudsters are phoning people and asking them to download apps onto their phone. Um, it seems to be Android phones that are getting targeted the most. Um, but what they've, what this app does is it will activate your phone when you're asleep. So they'll watch what you're doing. So if you're using kind of apps like banking apps, anything like that, or shopping and um, doing Amazon, they will... The, this this app then gives them the ability to activate your phone remotely and either buy things through Amazon or transfer money using banking apps. So just look out for that and again, let people know about that one as well because it is really clever and um, it can be quite devastating. And simple things that you've got here is watch out for poor grammar or spelling and, and emails and printed materials, so anything like letters and things. And the last one there is, again, um, something that I said before, but take five. So stop and think about what you're doing or what you've been asked to do. And if you are concerned, stop and talk to your friends and family um, before you act on anything that you do or anything that you receive. Um, like I said, a lot of frauds will um, often have a call to action. Um, and when you are panicked is when you will probably do something that you regret. So always just try and take that kind of five minutes, take a step back before you take any action. So I just want to say a big thank you for listening to me this uh, this evening and allowing me to give you that presentation but i'll take any questions that you might have oh that was brilliant that was brilliant George. Yeah. thank you very much thank you i'll ask everyone thank to you. unmute yeah and then uh and then i'll just stop your sharing John.